depending on how the the manufacturer uh, uh, measures uh, their clamps to the tip or butt, it could change the torque dramatically. We won't even uh, uh, look at the differences. But if, if here, if we use a two thirds of a pound, it reduces it by a third. If we use uh, a third of a pound of force, it reduces it by two thirds. It's inversely proportional to one another. So the torque could be any, on any of these shafts, could be whatever it is. It's just when you look at a manufacturer's uh, spec sheet, they never tell you how they actually measure it. Okay. Can you see the, uh, the next screen, Rob? Okay, why is shaft port or shaft weight important? The answer is tempo, tempo, tempo. This is what changes the tempo of your swing. The first decision that every customer needs to, uh, to have is do they choose steel or graphite? Steel has always been known for control and graphite for distance, but with a lot of lightweight um, steel shafts coming out that are almost as light as the uh, the graphite and vice versa. There's graphite shafts out there that weigh just as much as steel. You really have to look at the weight um, uh, nomenclatures. Here in, in the red, the 40, 50, and 60 gram uh, ranges in graphite, that's considered the ultralight. Those are the ones that are geared for more distance. And in, in steel, they'd be the 85 and 95 gram shafts. These are cut weights now, not the raw weights of the shafts, but the cut weights. For control, we're looking at 70 and 80 gram graphites primarily, although it could be heavier than that, and our 105 and 115 gram steel shafts. Okay. How light or heavy should you go? Well, if we were to use different demo cl clubs and we plot uh, shaft weight and overall distance, we might get a graph uh, like this one on the page here. At some point, uh, the weight is optimal to provide the, the greatest distance. By either going lighter or heavier, this, the swing speed starts to decrease. Yes, that implies lighter too. If the shaft gets too light, the player doesn't know where in the swing the uh, club is and may start to decelerate more at impact than usual. There's an optimal weight for each person as well as a point of diminishing return. Unfortunately, the only way to know is to experiment since each person is different. The next decision you have is what club length that you need. That'll, in some cases, determine what shaft weight. Usually the longer the club that you want or need, the lighter the shaft that you'll use. Now realize the difference in weight amongst, let's say, a 7-iron is related directly to the shaft weight more than anything else. Most heads uh, uh, weigh within grams of one another regardless of the manufacturer. And grips don't weigh that much different either given the same size. The exception would be if you went from maybe a standard or jumbo grip. So the static or overall weight of the club is often controlled by the shaft weight you select. Okay, let's look at the four basic uh, parameters here. We have flex. Basically, we have uh, generic letters, L, A, R, S, and X. Very subjective terminology, and as we've seen, there's no uh, uniformity of testing. Stiffness distribution, we're talking about the, the high and low mid-bed points and kick points. Again, subjective and no uni uh, uniformity of testing. Torque, well that's measured in degrees, but as we saw earlier, that there's no uniformity of testing. Um, manufacturers are free to change, or change how they uh, clamp the butter tip. That leaves us with weight. 
it's measured in grams and ounces, and that's something finally everybody agrees on. So the only reliable shaft fitting parameter is shaft weight. Other than that lies confusion. This is where I come in. For the last 20 years, I've been testing shafts using the same testing equipment and the same testing methods. This covers approximately 50 different shaft manufacturers and 3,000 shafts. All of this information is available free. I mean, uh, free for you to use. Just go to our website, uh, www.haricogolf.com, click on the support tab, and from there you'll be able to see the, the link to the two books. The first book is called The Modern Guide to Shaft Fitting. This explains why we started the testing, some of our findings, plus a conclusion uh, to what we found. The second book, the 2009 Shaft Fitting Addendum, has all the data or specifications for the shafts. And at the end, shows how to use the information. Putting it all together, accurate shaft fitting requires accurate shaft data. I can't overemphasize this part enough. We've done the homework for you. First, we tested all the shafts. Again, we tested them the same way with the same apparatus. That way, we're truly able to compare apples to apples. Secondly, we examined what shafts certain golfers were using well and why. Next, we created an index. Um, think of it as a way to rank shafts in the order of their stiffness. And lastly, and more importantly, we came up with a relatively simple system that club fitters could use and fit their customers with. We call this the Dynamic Shaft Fitting Index, or DSFI for short. The DSFI formula is based on actual cut data that we accumulated, including the, the completed club frequency, the cut shaft torque, the cut shaft tip and butt deflections, as well as the length. For ease of fitting, we use swing speed as our baseline. Certain factors uh, one has to look at. One is the length of a swing. Slim simply put, the shorter or more compact the swing, the stiffer the shaft is required at the same given swing speed. Why? Well, there's less time for the shaft to recover and square up at impact. So we factor 